In this video, we're gonna cover Super Nintendo emulation on the Mac version of RetroArch. All right, everybody, in this video, we are covering accurate Super Nintendo emulation using the BSNES core within the Mac version of RetroArch. So there are a ton of Super Nintendo emulators available. And again, this video in particular is focusing on accuracy. So BSNES is second to none in that category. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started, this video is a continuation of my Mac RetroArch install guide. So if you haven't gotten RetroArch installed, just go ahead and follow along with this initial setup video to get that all set up and good to go. And then come back and follow along with this video. Link to this playlist will be in the description below. But once you have RetroArch installed and set up, just go ahead and get it opened up. And then from here, head into the online updater, core downloader, and then press right on your keyboard arrows or on a controller if you have one plugged in to scroll down to Nintendo. And again, for today's tutorial, we are using BSNES. So just scroll down here and then just select it right here and it'll get it installed. And with that core installed, you are now ready to begin loading up Super Nintendo content. So one method of doing so is to head into load content, head down to the little slash here and navigate to the directory where your games are stored. So I have mine on an external hard drive. And there we go. So how about some Donkey Kong Country running on BSNES for M1 and 2 Max using RetroArch. Donkey Kong Country up and running. I need to mess with my VSync settings because I'm actually getting some screen tearing here, but otherwise this is looking pretty flawless and feels great. But that's the slower way of opening up stuff. So what I like to do instead is actually make a game's playlist. That way my games will all show up here on the left hand side of the screen. So. Easiest way to do this for Super Nintendo games is to go in to import content, click on scan directory, and then navigate to where your games are stored once again. Tell it to scan this directory. And when the directory scan has finished, you should have a new Super Nintendo playlist entry here on the left with all of your games inside. And then for all the games that it was able to detect, you should get a nice box art added in automatically downloaded. Now I've noticed that it didn't find all of my Super Nintendo games actually. So what I'm gonna do is actually go back into import content and I'm gonna do a manual scan. I'm gonna go back into my Super Nintendo games folder here. System name, I'm gonna go down to Nintendo and select Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Default core, gonna select BSNES. And I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and scan inside archives. I don't remember if I have my stuff zipped or not. But there's this option here for overriding the existing playlist. So go ahead and leave this option off. That way it'll only add in new items it finds and won't overwrite any of your old content. But just going to go ahead and start that scan. Now when I go back over here, there we go. There it is. It was missing my copy of Chip's Challenge, so I needed to make sure to get that in there. Now as expected, there's no box art for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and manually add one. So just gonna go ahead and quit out of that real quick. All right, I unfortunately don't have a way of getting an easier box art for this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and edit the marketing material from the Retro Room games. So just gonna save this image to the desktop here. Now I'm just gonna open this up. All right, so went ahead and got that image cropped up and saved. There we go, perfect. Now to get it to show up in the playlist, just need to insert it into the thumbnails folder with the same name as the game in the playlist. So it's easy enough to figure out what my playlist is. So just go back into RetroArch here. Super Nintendo Chips Challenge, there we go. So let's just rename that. All right, now to get to our thumbnails folder, just make sure you don't have anything selected up here. Click on go, hold down your um, whatever this key is and click on library. And that will bring us to this page here. Now inside this folder, go into application support and find your RetroArch folder. And then you'll find your thumbnails folder right here. Click on your system that you're trying to add the thumbnail for. So in our case, Super Nintendo. We're going to be going into the named Vox Art folder. And now we're going to add in our Chips Challenge 
thumbnail right there. So now when we go back in, it displays properly with the rest of our box arts. And there we go. But now to play a game, all we need to do is select it and tell it to run. And then if you are asked to choose a core, just go ahead and do so. But there we go, Super Nintendo games up and running through our playlists. But now let's go ahead and talk about some of the advanced core options that are available to you with the BSNES core. So pressing F1 on a keyboard or the guide button on a controller that you might have plugged in will bring you to the RetroArch quick menu. So once in here, just head down to core options and you'll see that we have a couple of different things to choose from. So first of all, we're gonna go into video here and we could set our preferred aspect ratio. So this is set to automatic by default, but you could change this between eight by seven with pixel perfect or a four by three aspect ratio or NTSC and PAL variants. I typically go with four by three because that's what I'm used to. Next, you could crop overscan to remove garbage data around the game border. So you can have an eight pixel overscan crop or you could turn it off to just reveal everything. Next up, we have blur emulation. So this will blur together some of the pixels to give you a more authentic look. But if you want the sharpest possible video output, just leave that one off. Next up, PPU fast mode. Just go ahead and leave this one on as it lets us use some interesting hacks that you might be interested in. So the first one being the PPU deinterlace options. So of the rare few Super Nintendo games that ran in interlaced format, you can actually get those to scale up to 480p and it's on by default. Next up, we have the no sprite limits. So for anyone that has experienced Super Nintendo sprite limits, you know the flashing can be a bit distracting. So you can turn this option on if desired to get rid of that. And our last one here is PPU no VRAM blocking. So this is for older ROM hacks. You don't need to have this option on unless you're using unsupported ROM hacks. So then you can turn this option on to get those to work. Next up, audio. So DSP fast mode, leave this one on. Helps improve emulation speed without much of a trade-off. And then you can apply some interpolation to the audio to get a different sound. And then finally, Echo Shadow RAM. So this is another one of those options that is needed for older ROM hacks. So cubic interpolation will be a personal preference thing. And then Shadow RAM will just be if you're using older ROM hacks. And next up we have HD Mode 7. So Mode 7 games include the popular Mario Kart, F-Zero, and other similar things but you are able to up res these to give you a much clearer image. So by default it is just set to 240p, but if you want to, you can crank this up to give you a much cleaner image presentation. So just again, for example here, here's 1x scale versus 3x scale. And then let's just crank that up even further. So you can see that it just presents a much crisper output and image and just looks really cool. But do be aware, the higher you push it, the more demanding it will be. So the M2 Mac Mini just standard cannot run this at the full 1920 resolution. But was having no problem at 1200p at 5x, so just have to dial in that sweet spot here to really get it to work great. So 1440p sounds and looks like it's going okay, but I'm just gonna knock it back down to 1200 to really give it the best possible performance. There we go, much better. Next up, perspective correction, so this will it will fix the perspective, making it look more pleasing. All right, next up, super sampling. So this will output everything at native resolution, but with the higher internal resolution, so it can act as an anti-aliasing filter. I'm not personally a fan of it. I'd rather just run things at native resolution if I wanna have them at native resolution, but mess with it on your own, see what you think. Next up, HD to SD mosaic. This one is on by default. And it's another one of those options where you just need to mess with it on a per game basis and see what your thoughts on it are. Next up, emulation hacks and enhancements. So the first option in this menu is internal run ahead. So this will help reduce input latency. And you could choose anywhere between one frame to four frames. So this is very demanding on system requirements. So do be aware of that. But it could greatly help reduce input latency to the point where the BSNES emulator actually 
runs with less latency than original Super Nintendo hardware. Now one thing you'll notice about this is it does kind of make it seem a bit skippy at times. And that gets affected by the number of frames you're running it ahead, so it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting trade-off. But anyway, coprocessor's fast mode, so this is another one that will reduce accuracy just to make it so things run a bit faster. And then coprocessors prefer HLE, so these are the high-level emulated versions of system chips that you used to have to add to the RetroArch system folder to get it to work. So you don't need to do that anymore, which is great. Anyway, hot fixes. So there were a number of Super Nintendo games that came with game-breaking bugs. So you can enable hot fixes and it kind of patches those. Next up, entropy randomization. So this will just mess with RAM settings. You can use this to mess with some stuff, see how it affects games rather. Not really needed on a just casual experience level. And then CPU fast math. So this is another one of those older ROM hack settings you need to enable to get those to work. All right, next up, overclocking and downclocking your emulated CPUs. Since the Super Nintendo didn't have the strongest CPU, there are a number of games that exhibit lag when a lot of things are happening on screen. By overclocking your emulated CPU, you can remove those lag instances but do note it can break some stuff, so use with caution. And then the same thing goes for the SA1 coprocessor and Super FX coprocessor. You can overclock those to get better performance in SA1 and Super FX games. Next up, Super Game Boy. If you want to use Super Game Boy with BSNES, you're going to need to have a Super Game Boy BIOS file ready to go. I really don't recommend using BSNES with Super Game Boy because you could just get Same Boy and activate the Super Game Boy effects a lot easier. And finally, light gun options. So our first option is a touchscreen light gun. You can turn this on or off if you have a touchscreen. I believe if you turn it off, it just activates your mouse as your light gun. And then you can reverse the trigger buttons on Super Scope games. But that's gonna do it as far as core options are concerned. So as always, if there are options you wanna have set for some games but not others, you can head into Manage Core Options and save them as a game options file so they only apply to the one game and not the core as a whole. Now the last thing I want to cover in this video is the use of video shaders. So scrolling down to the shaders option here, you can enable them here, and then head into load and begin loading up your preferred shader presets. Do make sure that you have shaders downloaded as shown in the initial setup guide. Just head into online updater, download shaders. But one of my favorite shaders to use is always going to be CRT easy mode. It just gives a nice, easy going setup for shaders, gives good scan lines, and just, it's just an easy effect and it works great on native resolution content as well as upscaled content. So it just has always been one of my favorites. But shaders are purely a personal preference matter. So just go through and use whichever ones you like. There are so many different options. If you want to apply HQX uh, filters and different things like that, like you're able to do it. There's just so many good options. But once you find a shader preference you'd like, you can just head back into the shader tab, click on the save button here, and you can apply them as a core preset or a game preset. So I'm just gonna set it as a core, so that way every time I load up content within BSNES, that is the option that will greet me. And that's gonna do it for BSNES setup. Super Nintendo emulation is nice and straightforward. All you need to do is have your ROM files, make your playlist, and then enjoy your games with some optional settings if you wanna have higher mode seven graphics. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your Super Nintendo emulation projects up and running to your desires. Now here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keep this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. Just can never thank you all enough. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.